Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday, October 7th, 2015. My name is Hatton Humphrey. I'm the host of the Front Porch Political Talk Show. And this is driving me crazy. Now, I, I want to talk about a concept this morning. This is something that we have, you know, we try in our, in my podcast, I try to point out when I am making gross generalizations. You have to be very careful making gross generalizations because the shoe doesn't always fit. Well, the, the challenge with this particular thing is that it does in a lot of cases. What am I talking about? I use the term opposition versus phobia versus hate. Now, this this came this idea came into my head as I was listening to a very good podcast. Um, Clark's World is a is a science fiction and fantasy podcast. Um, that I listen to quite often. I'm, I'm a sci-fi fan. I'm a geek. I make no bones about that. But as, as the narrator, Kate Baker, wonderful narrator, great reader, was doing her outro, it, it just kind of struck me, and it, it, I, I think it was a light bulb moment, that there is this mindset that if you do not openly and fully endorse a concept, you instantly hate it. And this this kind of bugs me. You know, I it it really made me think. Okay, so if I'm opposed to abortion, then I hate women. Or I hate you know if you're if you're opposed to choice if you're if you're um, I'm sorry if you're if you're pro-life you hate women if you're pro-choice you hate babies and I thought that's the dumbest thing that I've ever heard if you're pro-gay marriage then you're destroying Christianity. If you are against gay marriage, then you hate all gays. And I thought, that's the dumbest thing I have ever heard. It's kind of like saying, because I don't like zucchini, I I hate squash. Or no, I'm sorry. Because I don't like zucchini, I hate vegetables. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I don't like zucchini. Sorry. Doesn't mean that I don't like, that I hate all vegetables. Or that I hate farmers. We have developed this mindset that quite honestly drives me crazy. That if, if you, you can't be pro-life Right, well, okay, abortion's not a good example. You can't be part of the Black Lives Matter movement and support the police. And yes, that was coincidence, but it was a well-timed one. It's kind of like saying, because, because X, then you have to hate why. There's there's logical correlations that don't make sense in today's political world. So that's that's the first conversation. Why have we developed this this diametric opposition equals hate? Because you can be opposed to something. You can you cannot agree with a concept and not hate the people that are involved in that. 
you know, it's not like my wife has a fear of spiders. She does. And, it, but she doesn't hate spider owners. You know, people that have the, the big hairy tarantulas as pets. Yeah, you know, I, I am, I have a, you know, I've, I've tried to explain this in the past. I have a guttural reaction when I hear, you know, the phrase gay marriage. And, and we're not going to get into the whole Supreme Court issue. We're not going to get into the whole, just, just the phrase, okay? Using the word marriage, I have an, I have a guttural emotional reaction. And that doesn't mean that I hate gays. That doesn't mean that I don't think that there are, that there are injustices in same-sex relationships when family members turn into jerks when medical issues arise or when legal issues arise. And that doesn't mean that I see them as any less a human being. So, stating, and, and this statement, by the way, is not owned by one political side or the other. It happens on both political sides. And you have to be, you know, hate for me is such a strong word. It is, I mean, look up the definition. You know, I've, I, I very often, I, there's a quote from The Princess Bride that I love. You keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. You know, it, it, it really, the gut check concept has gone, has gotten thrown out the window. So, and then, then you bring in fear. I have a question. Arachnophobia. Yeah. What my wife has is, is a instinctual or deep-seated, rooted fear of spiders. And there are a lot of phobias. There's a phobia of clowns. There's a phobia of balloons. There's a phobia of open spaces. Um, there's a phobia of walking out you know, walking in front of a crowd without any pants on it. It's, I'm sure it exists. But to say because you don't agree with something that 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 is part of the gay movement immediately makes you homophobic, I don't think that word means what you think it means. You know, I... To be a homophobe, a true homophobe, if if my logic runs right here, and maybe it doesn't, I'm, I'm not a walking dictionary, but if my logic runs right here, to be truly homophobic means to have a guttural fear and inability to be around homosexuals. Well, first of all, that's logistically very difficult. Not impossible. Especially in some parts of the country. But it is logistically very difficult. And second of all, it's not how most if the, the vast majority of those you know that, that have problems with same-sex marriage live their lives and operate. So, does that word really fit? Oh, it fits the narrative. It sounds really good. It's an evil-sounding word. Let's label people with it. Again, <laughs> these noises don't come from just one side. So that's the conversation I wanted to have this morning. You know, why is it that we have, as a culture and as a nation and as a people, created this you know, diametric opposition equals hate concept and do phobia words really work? Those two questions. What do you think? Can I ask for your input? 
can post them in the comments section below. Uh, you can make a response video. Uh, you can send me an email, conservativepodcast at gmail.com. Post me a tweet at EC Conservative. Let's try this conversation thing. Let's have it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for riding along with me. Have a great day. Stay safe.